Starting from this video, we're going to learn about data types while creating tables for a market management system. For a market, for example, a supermarket, we need at least a product table. And the product table contains several columns. For example, we need category, like product category, whether it's vegetable or fruit or beverage or meat, and then the product name, the product description, the weight of the product, the price, quantity, the launch date. So let's say we have these columns. And in this video, we are going to cover the first three columns. And the data type of these three columns are string types. Let's jump into SQL Management Studio. First of all, let's create a database. So let's select SQL Server itself and click on New Query. So by default, Master Database is selected. Here's a question for you. We want to create a database, and the name of the database is Market Management. Can you try to create yourself? OK, I'm going to do it now. And we're going to type in Create Database. And we're going to name the database as Market Management. I'm going to press on F5. So the database is created now, right here. OK, the next exercise or the next question for you is that notice that currently the master database is the currently selected database. We want to switch to the newly created database, which is the marketing management database with SQL statement. How do you do that? Let's use the use statement switch database to market management and press on F5. You can see that it switched to marketing management right here. Now I can type in the SQL command create table or SQL statement create table. I'm going to create a table that is called product. You can name it as single or plural. I like to name it as plural, so products instead of product. And now we are going to only worry about those three different columns. Let's create the first column, which is the category. There are different ways to create the category column. In this video, we are going to use a string type. This doesn't make too much sense. Later on, you will know why. And we're going to change the way we specify the category in products table. But in this video, we're talking about data types, right? The string types. So it makes sense to use a string type for the category. So the name of the column is going to be called category. And I want to use three characters to represent the category of the product. And for that purpose, I can use the data type char. Right? Char means character. And for char, we always need to specify the length of the string. Right? So if I say three, that means I'm allocating three characters of space for the category column. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the name of the product. Here, I want the name to be no more than 50 characters. In order to represent that, instead of char, I use varchar. So variable characters. Okay, so this means that it's a character, but it has variable length. But if I specify 50 here, it means that the length of the name cannot exceed 50. But if it's less than or equal to 50, that's fine. Now for the description, I also want to use varchar. And the description should be less than or equal to 200 characters. Now we are good. And if I press on F5, the products table is created. So let's take a look at the products table right here. It shows up right here. Let's populate some data. I know that I'm going to teach you how to insert data into tables later. But an easy way to do that is to use SQL Server Management Studio, right click on the table, and then click on Edit Top 200 Rows. So I'm going to show me the top rows so that I can edit it. First of all, you see this null. What well, this means that there's no data, or data is missing, or unknown data. When data is not provided, it shows null. It's just telling us that this column doesn't have any data. So that is what null means. And next thing is, remember that category has only three characters. Let's say we have a product for meat. So I want to use ME to represent the category. And I'm allowed to do that. So don't worry about this explanation mark. Let's move on to the name column. So let's say here we are storing product beef. And here I'm going to say AAA beef. And now I click on the next row. 
and you can see the explanation mark disappeared. That means the data is actually inserted into the table. Now here's a special thing I want you to pay attention. We mentioned that the category columns type is char3, but now it's only storing two characters. It looks like the char type has also variable length. That's not actually true. Why do I say so? So if I click into beef and then I copy it out and paste it over here, you can see that I have one, two, three, four characters. Even though we specified that the name column stores up to 50, it still only occupies four characters. If I click into category and then I copy it out, I paste it over here. Looks like that I only have two characters, but there is a space behind it. So let's say that I change this to M to represent meat. And then I click out. Now the category is again saved in the database. Now if I click into the here, you already see that there's spaces behind it. You cannot delete that space. I can try to delete the space when I click it out and then click back in. You can see the space is right there. If I paste that M here, you can see one, two, and three. There's still three characters. So what that tells you is that if you want to use char, the column always stored the same number of characters that you specified for the column. So in our case, category always stores three characters. And if you try to store less than three, SQL Server adds spaces at the end so that it occupies three characters. So that now the question is, should you use char or should you use varchar? Each one of them has in pros and cons. The char characters occupy more space than it needs to and virtual save space. However, because it saves space, the length of the column is unpredictable. So therefore the performance of the column is not as good as char. So it's for you to determine whether you want to use char or virtual. In our case, if we determine that category can only be three characters, cannot be less than three characters, or it's always three characters, then it makes sense to use char as the data type. So in that case, we enforce the rule that category has always three characters. So therefore, a category like meat, it will be M-E-A. Category of vegetable will be V-E-G. And let's insert something like cabbage and maybe I'm gonna say California cabbage. And for fruit will be F-R-U and maybe watermelon and this is maybe mexican watermelon okay so in this case i arbitrarily enforce that a category can only be three characters cannot be more cannot be less in this case i want to use char but for the name or descriptions the length itself varies but therefore i'm using word char another data type for string i want to mention is invert char so n char or invert char in char or invert char, it just means that the columns support Unicode. So Unicode is good for storing other languages like Chinese, Japanese, whereas if you just use English, you can get away without the N here, right? So if your table needs to deal with, um, let's say our product table needs to deal with products from other countries that the language is only supported by Unicode, then you have to use nchar for the name here. Perhaps not the category. Category can always be uh, use English letters. But the name, you want it to support Unicode. And perhaps description, you also want it to support Unicode. Unicode to database itself, it just occupies more space. nchar doubles the space of char. So when I say nchar3, this occupies the same space as char6, right? Because it doubles the storage space. Okay, in this video, you learn about char and varchar. You learn about the unique differences between them. And that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll see you in the next one.